Hey everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the Press Enterprise High School Football Video Podcast. I am Press Enterprise Sports Editor Tim Hare, and I am joined by Adam Roberts this week. Uh, we're going to talk about some playoff football here. Um, yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, now, you uh, did the Berwick North Pocono preview. You got a chance to talk to uh, Frank Sheptock. Hey, Coach Dolan. Yep, that's yeah. right. Uh, w- what do you think of this matchup? How, how does Berwick match up with North Pocono? I mean, it... it I know it's kind of cliche to say, but this isn't going to be an easy game. I mean, no game is in the playoffs. And uh, this team's a big physical team. They got a uh, uh, fullback in Tyler Musgrave, big kid, and another big kid in Matt Craig at running back. And those are two guys that um, that Coach Dolan has, has, has pretty much built the team around. And, uh, and those aren't little guys either. Uh, I know that from talking to them, they're 300-pound uh, bench guys and also right around 500 pounds on the squat. What? I mean, yeah. those are those are big guys. I mean, that that's not that, that's incredible strength. So I mean, it, it's not going to be easy. Yeah, and, and it seems like that's what they did last week against Valley View. Just reading about that game, they they ran for about two fifty. They held Valley View to about fifty yards, and it was kind of the, the teams had played in October, and it was kind of the flip of that, where Valley View ran all over North Pocono. Now, scheme wise, did, did they run it just like kind of a, a downhill between the tackles? Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, talking to him there uh, and Coach Shep talking and what they scouted, uh, this team is is definitely a downhill running football team, but also they're a team that also uses the play action a lot. So this isn't a type of offense that Berwick has faced week in and week out. Uh, the play action is something that they face pretty sparingly throughout the season. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how they react to that. You know, you can't can't bite too much on the run. Uh, the defensive backs are going to have to stay home. Uh, and they also do some different things on the line of scrimmage. You know, I know from playing football in the past and, and seeing it, just basic techniques, you know, you put your arms out to your side and that's your splits. You know, yeah. for Now, they'll sometimes be toe-to-toe, Coach Sheptock mentioned. And also, they have a, a, a guy who... Um, they use as an H back in Ben Dial, and they'll bring him on the line of scrimmage and use him almost as an extra blocker to get them like another uh, hole to run through. So it's going to be kind of interesting. You're going to see some unbalanced lines and uh, get, get a lot of different fronts for um, Berwick's defensive front. You know they're going to have to they're going to have to have a tough game. So now you, you talk about the, the size uh, the size and strength of that North Pocono line. You know, Berwick pretty pretty big along their defensive front, and uh, some experience with you know you have Kyle Pierce, Kyle Roberts. Uh, yeah, the Kyles, I like yeah. to call them. Yeah, those are big guys. Uh, they're going to have to have a big game. Joe Norris in, in uh, Stone Force on the ends. You know, the, the, those four those uh, four guys on the line of scrimmage are going to really dictate how this game is going to go. And not to mention, they take a tremendous amount of pressure off the, off the linebackers. I mean, these are experienced guys. You know, mostly seniors who've who've kind of played and they're they're battle tested, and uh, I know Coach Sheptock mentioned that the team that North Pocono has features a veteran offensive line, um, you know, which is, is kind of true. And talking with their head coach, you know, they're not they are a veteran line, but but there's other spots where there's an experience, and I suspect that that's something that Coach Sheptock has also scouted out very well. That I know they had Matt Caputo who played a little last year and is pretty much been a full-time starter this year, but they also have Chase Hilton at right tackle, who is pretty unexperienced. You know, he's a new guy this year, so, um, you know, I don't know. It might be interesting to see how they exploit the, those two things there. Now, it seems like Berwick offensively has been very hit or miss. You know, there was a stretch in the season where they were struggling to get more than two touchdowns a game, and then you have games where they drop 60 on a Pittston or a Lake Lehman. Do you think Berwick has enough, and do you think they do enough things well on offense to put enough points on the board to win this? Uh, you know, I, I saw them earlier in the season, and they had uh, Jared Marshman at quarterback, and he was inconsistent. And um, they they would bring in uh, Force at times to uh, Mike Force to you know kind of be a change of pace, do a little bit of the zone reads, um, and and that would that would help. But you know, you, at this point in the game, you got to have a quarterback that can throw the football downfield. And I saw that against Wyoming area. And, uh, you know, he, he was throwing it right down the seam on the fly routes. And he would have connected a, a couple times more if it weren't for a defensive back stepping up and making a play. So I'm really impressed with how he's progressed and how Shep Talk has really brought him along and, and where he's at now. Do you think Berwick wins this game? Oh, man, it, it's <laughs> going to be tough. Uh, they, I, I mean, I like, I like the way Marshman's playing. He's got 11 touchdowns to five interceptions. He's got... 
over 1,400 yards through the air. I mean, those aren't those aren't small numbers. Those are big boy numbers. So um, I, I'm I'm kind of impressed with you know the way he's stepped up in the last couple games to to, to air it out and, and take those shots deep. And I also want to talk about you know Jai James at linebacker. Oh yeah, he's a new guy and he's one of those guys that I start you know you start hearing over the loudspeaker over and over you know his name being called, and and I'm surprised at the way he has played. Also, he's a guy that right around week five was kind of like a nobody until the JV uh, Sealands Grove game where you know Coach Shep talk really noticed him and, and was a guy, figured that this has a, had to be a guy to start. And so since then, he's been, um, you know, kind of the guy with the Chef Talk said had all these instincts, you know, had all these, you know, playmaking abilities and also the downhill linebacker that they needed. So I'm impressed with the way he's playing, especially for a young kid. And also Damon Beckcourt, he's another guy who's really come a long way in the offense. I know, um, as we mentioned, Berwick has struggled offensively earlier in the season, all but Lenny Wida, you know, he's right. having a tremendous season. Um, you know, they were kind of struggling to figure out how they were going to use Damon Beckcourt. And you saw it last week with the jet sweep, and he just took, he stopped, took it to the house, you know. So uh, I'm really excited with that. It's going to be interesting, excited. I'm, I'm excited for him because he's a guy that has a lot of fun on the football field. I mean, he had a touchdown. He had an interception. Shep Talk credited him for three tackles on special teams that helped pin Wyoming area down inside the 20. So, I mean, just his factor in uh, field possession and special teams, that's tremendous. And, um, you know, I also wanted to, it was after the game, I saw him, uh, Coach Shep Talk, hand uh, Beckhorn a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup and Kit Kat yeah. from his dad, I guess, like kind of like, you know, an agreement that they had. So at the end of the podcast... I have uh, <laughs> you know, Reese's because I know you're a peanut butter guy and a Kit yes, Kat that we can uh, shelf and eat, you know, afterward. Pleasant surprise. Yeah, yeah, full of, full Dan, of tricks. Dan never brings me candy. Oh, well, you know, All right? Don't tell, don't tell us, you know. <laughs> now uh, let's switch gears a little bit here. Talk about Southern. Um, South Williamsport comes in just one loss, but Southern has to be a pretty heavy favorite here. Yeah, uh, I know there was a little bit of questions around how Southern was going to face or, you know, what you were going to see against the Line Mountain game. They were an option offense, something that Southern hadn't really seen, you know, except for Mount, Mount Carmel, which is different. I mean, right. they, they, they do something a little different there. And, and let me say, Southern shut that down cold. I, I don't think Line Mountain had more than maybe a handful of runs for uh, 10 or more. And what, what I was impressed with was it wasn't just the assignment football, but the way people swarmed to the ball. Like even on three yard runs, there were six guys there yeah. where Kenny Boyer, who had a nice game and is a very nice player for Line Mountain, but just had nowhere to go. Uh, and you know, let's talk about Stone Hollenbach too though. I mean, him at quarterback, he's been tremendous. I, I, I know, you know, Southern ha has been hounding these teams, their defense, which, which was a surprise, you know, Roth wasn't sure how those guys were gonna respond being that there was some new guys there. So I mean, that's definitely been a surprise there, but also just as much a surprise as Southern's quarterback. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, look at his yards, especially considering there was, you know, a lot of unknowns with him coming into the season here. Right. Yeah, he, uh, I was looking at the numbers this week. Uh, with last week's performance, he now has more passing yards this year than Dan Latour did uh, when he was player of the year in 2004. Now, wow. La Latour ran for more than 1,000, mm -hmm. which isn't... You know, that's not something that Hollenbach either brings to the table or that they really ask him to do much. They, they, in the past, you know, they ran Becker in the playoffs last year, and that was a nice added dimension to the offense. Uh, but, you know, it's just not something they've really had Hollenbach do. But The kid's like a mercenary. I mean, like, how, how do you go and, I mean, you find this guy who hasn't been in your system, you know, shows up as a sophomore, as a young kid, not a kid that's a junior, a 17, 18-year-old, you know, young man. Uh, you're talking about a guy who's 15, a, a young man who's 15 years old. And, and to pick up an offense like that, and, and not just that, to throw with confidence. I mean, you look at the numbers, you look at the touchdowns, the interceptions. I mean, they speak for themselves. Yeah, uh, th there were only a, a handful of times uh, in the games I've covered uh, of, of Southern where it looks like he has been like uh, a little flustered under center. He's usually very poised. They, uh, two plays stick out last week. He had an interception, which was, you said he doesn't throw interceptions. Yeah. It's kind of an anomaly. And it, it looked, uh, you know, from what I saw, that he was looking for Hunter Thomas uh, in the right flat. 
and he didn't have his hips set right. He, he was almost like pointed away from Thomas for some reason. Uh, and, and he threw, you know, kind of a bad ball for an interception. Um, and those are the sophomore mistakes, though. Right, that's what you expect from a sophomore. Just about the only mistakes, though, he's been making. But now, having said that, he was 6 of 10 for about 150 yards, two touchdowns. <laughs> In a wing T offense where you're going to run for 400 yards or so, you're going to take that. I don't want to downplay, uh, you know, anything that any of those numbers. But what was it, that Fleming kid? Yeah. I think he makes that a lot easier. He does. He's Julian a Fleming's a, a tremendous player on the receiver. And um, I think every time I ask Josh, uh, Coach Roth, you know, that's something that he mentions, just the athleticism that he has as a freshman, to go up and get these balls. I mean, I'm not saying that uh, Hollenbach's inaccurate with it, but the fact that, you know, the jump balls that you need your right. receiver to that make. He, yeah. A freshman's making them. Uh, and Hollenbach did a very good job of that on the first touchdown throw to Fleming where it was like a third and 20. Southern had some penalties, got backed up to midfield. Uh, Line Mountain had good coverage. And Hollenbach, you know, he throws a really nice deep ball. He threw it over uh, the outside shoulder. Right where Fleming's the only one. You know, it's, it's to that sideline. And, I, I mean, you can't defend it much better than uh, Brendan Craiger of Line Mountain did, and they still hook up for a 48-yard touchdown. I mean, how it's, many, it's almost unfair. Yeah, how many more offensive uh, weapons can you really ask for on a team? I mean, you have a quarterback who's a young guy. You have a receiver who can just, you know, run out, of the, run and jump out of the building. And, and it, I mean, you, we talk about Fleming, but then you have Cam Young, who when, when you talk about a possession receiver, is as good as they come. Yeah, and, and that's another thing. I want to talk about Cam Young. We, uh you know, facing South Williamsport, they're going to run the ball a lot, but they also like to use that play action. He's going to be like a walking blanket out there. Yeah, I, I'm sure I, they're going to lock him on Gariski. I mean, I, 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 Gariski's a talented kid. I've seen him play, but, uh, I mean, Cam Young's about as battle-tested as they can as they come. And, uh, and that's going to be a tough matchup for the quarterback to place balls where Cam Young can't get to him and, and only where Gariski can. Yeah. And, uh who is, it? is it Gideon Green there in the running back? Yeah, uh, he's about as big as Eric Dickerson. He's yeah, like he's like a running... 6'3", 230. Yeah, he looks like a lineman out there getting the football. Uh, I watched them against Mount Carmel, and they gave him the ball over and over and again. Certainly less than the workload that he's used to, but he's a guy that can take the, can take the handoffs 30, 40 times a game, which, I mean, you're looking at being at 13 games into the, the season now. That's pretty impressive to be healthy. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty eager to, uh, to tackle this candy. So uh, let's wrap it up. But if you enjoyed what you saw, please check out PressEnterpriseOnline.com. Or even if you like Kit Kats and Reese's. Yeah, if you like Kit Kats, Reese's, crack one open. Life's too short. Uh, but Adam's going to be at the Berwick game, so follow him. He's uh, real Adam Roberts on Twitter. Yeah. Don't, don't accept any substitutes. Yeah, no fake ones. Uh, I will be at Southern. I am at TimHair87. So for Adam Roberts, I am Press Enterprise Sports Editor Tim Hare, and we will see you next week.